and welcome to the Slice Bread Podcast, where we give you a daily slice of life. I am your host, Gary. And on today's panel, we got our boy, Lenny. Your local boy. Nice. We got Chris. I'm Chris, and I love the crust. Lovely, lovely. And last, but certainly not least, we got the boy, Bob. Not the boulder, where we don't build things up, we break them Damn. And today we're going to break down and break bread today's topic. And today we're going to speak about social media. Social media is such an important part of everybody's life. We use so many social media apps to get in contact, to post pictures, and just, yeah. So I'm going to talk about the first social media app that really got you, you know, it made you get excited. So I'm going to start with Chris. Chris, what was that first social media app that made you go up and down? Thank you so much, Gary. I would say the first social media app that really got us all uh, involved in virtually communicating is Mixit or MXit, as it was known. I don't know if you guys remember Mixit or MXit. Hey, listen here. Sexy eyes has always come my way. <laughs> <laughs> that ASL. <laughs> You go into a chat, you drop your things and you know, you see what you, it's like a fish, fish sport fisherman. (laughs) Yeah, so that, that was where, where we really realized, well, we can start communicating with with each other without actually being in the same spaces. And it was, it literally changed our worlds, I think, it changed the way we started communicating with one another. So I would say mix it and then obviously Facebook happened and then it just went crazy from there. I would actually say, uh, Chris, as that, technically it was just, instant messaging at a cheaper rate because obviously the yeah. sms mm-hmm. was always there they even had mms but who really looked at the pictures there <laughs> like it cost like three <laughs> rand yes but the expense of messaging each other and yeah. getting in contact that's what the mix it <laughs> according to you is that's where it's um, primary accessibility took place because it was cheap and it was amongst people that were young that's why it was possibly the first one i experienced before we started moving on to better phones and better apps. Because let's face it, the Blackberry at some point in time really took over <laughs> the <Blackberry> world <laughs> where that BBM was a thing. Yes. So I, I would say mix it first, BBM too. What's your BBM pun? <laughs> <laughs> and Facebook obviously, but I had never interacted in the DMs there. Just to inject something, uh, Lenny, you said three ran for like um, mix it. Did you get a salsi per, um, um, some card? No, well, it was three rand for the MMS, and that's why you went to mix it. Because I mean, as as a youngster, who has three rand to spend on a message? No, or even one rand to spend on an SMS. <laughs> no, I'm just saying with a Saucy um, SIM card, all you had to have is a fifty cent, on, oh, and, then you, and you can chat for days on mix it, dude. That's yeah. the only reason I got a Saucy SIM card at the time. <laughs> Let's keep it a thousand. The sexy I was waiting for you. Yay! <laughs> she was. She wasn't on the way. She was in love. She was online. <laughs> in love, yes. She was in love. Not on the way. You were she chatting. <laughs> Yo, bring it, bring it uh, up. Memories, guys. Retro gaming. Exactly. <laughs> Bringing up all these, um, these social media apps bring a lot of memories. But um, do you feel like those social media apps evolved or did you just evolve to go something different? You know? Did you like move away from Mixit to something better or did Mixit just become, instead of a, so, like a normal texting app, to become more like, you know, advertising social media? Like, no. like not social media, advertising products. So, Bob... I would say the thing about Mixit was you had to log in every time before mm-hmm. you could access this ability for instant messaging. But as uh, evolution took place, like let's say the BBM or the WhatsApp or the Facebook, it's instant. It's like it's immediate. There isn't any sort of uh, security barriers you needed to go through. Mm-hmm. I think, so, the, sorry to board break you, but the key thing there was the smartphone era that, that kicked in. Yeah, evolution <laughs> took place, man. You had to... Grow up and do better <laughs> in life. <laughs> Get better phones. On that evolution, Bob, it's, 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 it is evolution, but it's scary at the same time that as long as you have data or you are connected to Wi-Fi, you are always online. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. You're always accessible. Yeah, o- it like that. always accessible. Because now, mix it. If you were not online and you get a message, there's no ping, there's no um, notification. But now you don't need to be on Facebook, on have WhatsApp open mm-hmm. or have Instagram open, but you'll still get that notification. Yes, it's yes. Always so be you can there. still read the message without reading it. The blue tick really destroyed everything. <laughs> and <laughs> and and on that on that point about uh, Mixit is that I feel like it's a bit sad in that way because it takes the romanticism out of 
when you went on mix it you were you went on to chat to people yeah so when you would chat to like pop mentioned your crush or whatever then Six it was the, the tension was there because you on mm-hmm. online at the time to chat whereas now the messages are more watered down they don't carry the same amount of value anymore because you can send it at any time of the day and that person will now receive it at any time of the day yeah so the conversation doesn't flow in the same way like it used to I feel fair yeah. enough, Chris. But we all do must that. Please call me. Go and mix it. Yeah, guys, man, you're bringing up so many memories, right? But now let's go a bit further. Let's look at the different apps. I'm talking about your Instagrams. I'm talking about your Twitters. I'm talking about all those new funky ones, even the TikTokers. So, like, how are these new social media apps like um applying to your life? I'm mean, talking about you, Lenny. Do you enjoy Instagram? Do you enjoy Twitter? What do you use it for? So forth. Social media, I enjoy it to an extent in the sense that there's accessibility to things that interest me and mm-hmm. it's, it's quicker to view certain things. Um, I don't like the fact that I get bombarded with tons of things that I'm not interested in. Mm-hmm. As soon as I click on one thing or watch one thing, suddenly those algorithms kick in and now it's just all there. Mm-hmm. And it's difficult to avoid that. It's like if I'm watching a post of wrestling or whatever for the next 20 days or for the rest of my life everything that pops up on my feed is now wwe mm-hmm. which I'm, I'm a fan of but i mean it's not like i want to have that for the rest of my life on my timeline you know um it does have its pros and cons accessibility you get to catch up on people's lives especially if you've got friends that are overseas or mm-hmm. ones that you don't see as much it's nice to kind of keep track of them of where they are at but it definitely has its cons as well. And Bobby? First and foremost, please like, follow uh, the Slice Braid podcast on all those social medias that was mentioned please. previously. Please <laughs> and thank you for that. Um, with regards to social media and its usage, um, I would say I like Twitter. I just don't. I think it's very toxic. <laughs> Let me just be real about it. Room to vent. <laughs> I like Instagram because I can see people um, posting the fake lifestyle they really want, but it's cute. It's nice to watch. I uh, like Facebook because then you can get the old people's true opinions because they don't care. They have no filters. Mm-hmm. It's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the one I probably use the most is WhatsApp for either business or marketing or some sort of personal relationship. So that's my go-to one. Okay. Because watching statuses has now affected everybody all social medias have it whether it's a reel whether it's a short story facebook has it instagram has it whatsapp has it so you know i'd rather watch my the people's lives that i really care about mm-hmm. via statuses than to uh watch celebrities and chrissy boy yeah i feel i don't know if anyone mentioned it just the whole the whole capitalism aspect that social media has created i mean people are basically using facebook more Instagram actually and this new app that's now come out uh, I think maybe in 2017 or so, 2018, I'm, I stand um, corrected, TikTok and people are becoming famous of Instagram Yeah. and TikTok, they are literally creating their own brands. It's creating, I mean, I mean let's not forget social media has also created a lot of jobs now. Yeah. Yes. Most companies now literally have social media departments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's a huge thing I think that social media has done in, in modern times. I do feel like uh, Instagram and TikTok is very superficial and dodgy Mm -hmm. in terms of how people present (laughs) their lives, but that's obviously, we can talk about that all day. but that's the fantasy, don't you think? No, definitely. It's selling the fantasy. (laughs) The thing is, I'm not on TikTok, but you'll see TikToks on every other uh, platform, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, they'll show you TikTok TikTok videos, and you're like, I'm not even on TikTok, but it's affecting my uh, timeline and algorithm. If I take for, for me... I enjoy social media for what it gives me. If you use YouTube, if I need something to fix, I just Google it. Uh, yeah, how to, how to, how, fix, how to yeah. fix something. I YouTube, just a, a fix, well, how you answer a question. I think that's its purpose. And then you can see it because if you Google it, you'd still have to read the instructions. Exactly. But to see it actually occur on the exactly. camera helps you better understand it. Exactly. That's why I use YouTube for all those DIYs and something mm-hmm. like for those things. And then you guys forgot to mention LinkedIn. Like LinkedIn is very important. Oh, yes. Work-wise. Yeah. yeah. 100%. You guys oh, forgot- played Gary. 
I usually give you a lot of grief, but look at you now. Oh, he's <laughs> building you on, up just you, a little bit. <laughs> you're going on me, man. Yeah, but LinkedIn, because like I use LinkedIn just to look for like for jobs, you know, for any posts available and stuff. So it's very much important. Like, and your yeah, Instagram, yeah, it's pretentious. You, you know, you got your influencers, you got all these people posting their fake lifestyle, but they don't show them how much debt they're in. But guys, we're talking about all like the positives of social media. What do you feel about the negatives of social media? Because for me, I feel. You share your location, man. You know, when you go out, like you post a picture like, I'm at this location. It kind of gives people aware where your whereabouts are, man. If you go live, and especially if it's someone who's living in your in your city, and they notice certain surroundings or backgrounds in your life, right? Mm -hmm. um, they know where you are. Again, what you said, Gary, if you post a location, they know where you are at. Mm -hmm. um, people can recognize stuff in the background. If you're taking a picture at home and they see something, they can kind of, track it down mm. it is a dangerous thing as well and i think that's a con uh well it's definitely a con mm. but another con is is also just selling that lifestyle where people now view this and they think okay in order for me to achieve happiness in life this is the life i need to aspire to mm. so i'm gonna chase it exactly yes i want to bring something to you bob so I was on this app called Tinder, right? So I was like swiping <laughs> left and right. What so a net. Oh, Tinder. So I saw this one like beautiful female and I'm like, she, I swipe right to her, she swipe right to me, chatting, chatting, chatting. And I was, so we chatting. So I was like, yo, let's do like a video call. Got catfish boy. Yo, of course. Shame. This is what I'm saying. Like the cons of social media is um, you conflating it for real life. Mm. Yeah. So uh, the catfish story is like you can fall in love with a fake persona because mm. you're conflating it with real life. It, no matter what you say on social media, if you can't say it to the person in front of you, you just faking it because real life is where it matters. Do you Would, so, sorry to cut you off, Gary. Do you think, Bob, just with that, do you think that social media, especially when you are meeting people, right? Mm. Um, do you think it's should be more of just a setup for that eventual in-person meet Absolutely. instead of just to continuously being the online talk. Absolutely, because it's two different sort of communications because there's, there's verbal and then there's non-verbal communication and the non-verbal can only take place in real life with the person in the room with you and that is where you'll find more information about that person than you ever will online because you will lie. People can lie and you won't yeah, tell the yeah, difference. Totally. If I'm in the room, I can feel your energy like, oh, you on some nonsense right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I can step away. That's sort of decision making to fall in love online. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I've never trusted anyone that said they love me and I never met them. But it's, it's happened though. Yeah. It's um, happened People before. have met each other online and they, some people are even married today because yeah. of it. But I mean, then it would come down to... Eventually. And where did they get married in real life? Well, yeah. <laughs> or online. <laughs> no matter what work you put in on social media or in the DMs or none of that, you're going to have to replicate that yep. same thing in real yep. life because in any you, case. You build so much pressure up for yourself. And, this is and you, will, you will yeah. fail to the very expectations you build it up to. Because no one is perfect. Exactly. So yeah. selling the idea that I'm perfect is... Right. And if you're talking online, you've got time to think about responses exactly. and stuff. Exactly. In person, it's quick. The most important thing is uh, reactions to things. When someone says something, yeah. how you react. You can't really lie in, in real life, but you can also misunderstand things online. Yeah. Under tone and context. That's what you yes. learn in work specifically. It's like, if you say something, it can be derived um, wrong exactly. from the person reading it, if they're reading it in their mind in a different tone. Yeah. You could mean it friendly, but it would come across as rude or arrogant by accident because it's not in real life. Because if you could talk or you're on the phone at least, the voice inflections will indicate, oh, he's, this is being sarcastic or this is being um, playful, but you can't read that via text. Yeah. For example, if you're reading on an email, as per my last mail, that <laughs> is not a gentle response. Yeah, no, there's certain nuances. There's yeah. certain nuances within text that you got to pick <laughs> up on. Uh, so, <laughs> as per my previous mail, you got that? You'll scroll down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scroll, yeah. But you can't say scroll down. I mentioned this before, as previously mentioned. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mm. trust you are well. You really don't. <laughs> I always say that. <laughs> of course, it's the professional response. Of course, yes. Okay, since we guys talk about professional, let's talk about the business aspect of social media. You see a lot of companies using Instagram, Facebook, you know, advertising. What's your opinions on that? 
Do you feel it's a good thing? It's a bad thing? Well, for me personally, Gary, I think it's a, it's a good thing that companies can now advertise and get their names out there. Mm -hmm. And especially for, for more informal, smaller businesses, it is quite valuable to them for them to get their names out there. Um, but at the same time, it does also bombard the viewer or the customer with a lot of information. No, I agree with you 100% on that one. And um, Chris? Like Lenny said, with the whole bombard, there's good and bad in it. Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, it can create a lot of jobs for people. And what do you think, Gary, about the whole thing? I applaud it. It's important to have um, business um, advertising, they show they stuff on social media, man. It gives a much uh, easy access to like um, to the um, content, man. Because you don't want to always... Okay, I'm old school, so I'll get a, a, a newspaper and scroll through the, the newspaper to see what they're advertising. But now, you can just go on, on, the, on the web or on your phone and you just can find, okay, the specials are here on Superbulous, the specials are here on... Do you really still read the newspaper, Gary? Yeah... I don't know about that. <laughs> I, suppose can, propaganda. <laughs> I suppose we can put that as a con then. Um, social media and internet in its whole has kind of killed everyone's need for the newspaper. Mm. So they were never good in the first place. <laughs> get them out. Get going. What I would say though as Bobby, <laughs> the business aspect of social media is complete and utter nonsense. I don't trust anybody on social media. Why would I trust the business on social media? I would go actually to the corporation and deal with them there rather than get private sales <laughs> from people in all those areas where it's cheaper than it normally would. I was basically just talking about the official websites. I wasn't talking about like marketplaces and that stuff. That That is a different ball no, because that's business if you really think about it. I'm yeah. selling to a consumer. Who's the consumer? Anyone that uses the platform. Okay, yeah. See. Oh, Gary, are you mentioning, for example, I have a business and I have a Facebook page, I have yes, an Instagram I mean, like, account and yes, all of these things. That's what I mean here. Yeah. Like, that's what I mean. There's yeah, then everyone that. should have it because uh, it's information for your particular business that will, you know, help supplement the economy even. I care about the economy over here. <laughs> Bobby, Bigger thinking. We support the tax man. No, I'm going to talk about a guy that tells you like I'm selling a PlayStation 5 but it's actually a PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 2 mended together. <laughs> what is it yeah now if they did that on let's say ebay or amazon or something like that then you can go to customer service and fight them like what is this, this nonsense but you do you it on, on social media <laughs> bye exactly. if you fall for that you deserve that yes, yeah, thank you for your money <laughs> <laughs> scammers everywhere guys you understand? i trust nobody <laughs> but anyhow so we gave all our pros and all our cons right i was i just want to give you guys a conclusion what do you feel is social media a good thing for you or a bad thing? You know, what, what's your opinion on that, um, Chris? Look, as I said, I do fear a lot for social media when it comes to superficiality. That's a conversation for another day. Business-wise, social media can work to your favor and also to stay connected with friends and family. Nice. Um, Lenny? Definitely, it's a bit of both. A bit of good, a bit of bad. But I'll say good because I get to... Keep in touch with certain friends, um, ones that you don't get to see as often. And also, it keeps you a bit closer to all of your own interests, um, if the algorithm allows it. And that's it for me. Nice. And for myself, I'll say it's a good thing because I enjoy social media. It's very much a quick way just to get into contact with people, contact with life and everything else. Obviously, you're going to have a bit of your cons on there, but you, you'll deal with it, man. It's nothing, nothing serious except for the catfishing part. Let's wipe left for that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, let's, let's leave it last for our boy, Bob. Uh, social media is bad. Um, the older I got, the less connected I want to be to people. I want to be off the grid. I don't want to be accessible to people 24-7. I don't like it. I'd rather they uh, keep their products to themselves. I don't want it. Don't advertise to me. If I want something, I'll get it. Thank you. Well done for breaking it down. And let's break down this episode and tune in for our next slice of life. <laughs>